Okay, so we are going to look at the net torque acting on this uh, 10 centimeter, so 0.1 meter radius disc that's rotating about its central axis. All right, so I have four different forces acting on this disc. And when we think about net torque, we think about how every one of these forces would induce a torque on the disc. And if we put all that together, what is the total torque that the disc experiences? Some are trying to rotate it one way, some are trying to rotate it the other way. How do we analyze the total torque? And when we look at net torque, we often look at an extended free body diagram of an object and, of course, where the forces are acting on that object. And most of this, uh, the um, problems that we examine, we can take that extended free body diagram and squish it into a single line and look at where the forces are all acting along that line, along a single line. A disc is a little bit different because we want to look at these forces are all acting at different spots in a two-dimensional space. And so as we examine the net force, or the, excuse me, the net torque acting on that disc, we're going to look at the extended free body diagram relative to each one of those forces analyze the torque by each one of those forces, and then put them together as the net torque. So just a slightly different strategy than um, we've been talking about, but again, just as effective. So let's look at these four forces. I've already labeled them one, two, three, and four. And we'll look at how do the, each of these forces influence the disc, then add those all together. So if we look at that first disc, uh, excuse me, that first force, it's going to rotate the disc as if the disc was a horizontal bar about its center. So in this sort of a fashion. This is force number one. And that force, which is two meters long, or excuse me, two newtons strong, is acting at 0.05 meters relative to the disk's pivot point. So I have both my radii for that force and if I extend that radius from the pivot point and curl to the force, I get my angle of 90 degrees. And it's in the counterclockwise direction, so it's positive. So the torque for force 1 is equal to force 1 times radius 1 times the sine of angle 1, which is equal to the force of 2 newtons times the radius of 0.05 times the sine of 90 degrees. So we have 2, 2 times 0.05. We get 0 0.1 Newton meters. And it's positive because we have a positive angle. It's going to try to rotate that disk counterclockwise. All right, so that's force one. Let's say at force number two. Now, force number two is acting along this radius of the disk. So if I were to draw an extended free body diagram for force two, it would appear in this fashion. And I put two Newtons in my initial this, in my initial thing I'm noticing. I added that that this should be 20 Newtons. 20 Newtons. So 20 times 0.05, of course, it's just by an order of magnitude, so this should be one newton meter. Sorry about that, I put 2.0, but that wasn't jiving with the rest of the forces. Okay, so in this case, my radius would be 0.1 meters. It does act at the full radius of the disk. And my angle, if I, well, theta is equal to zero. And this, this means that the sine of theta is equal to zero. So the torque by force two has to equal zero. This force, if I pull on the, sphere, the disk in this direction, that force isn't going to rotate it. So intuitively, I know it's not going to rotate it. And it doesn't rotate it because of that angle. So remember, it's not just about how, where the force is applied, but that angle at which it's applied will or will not induce a torque. All right, well, what about force number three? And just to get a little bit different color, this, similar to force one, is acting on the disk as if it were in that horizontal plane. And it, too, is acting at 0 0.05 meters. This angle is 45 degrees. And so when we look at 
the radius is 0 0.05. And as we look at the angle, we extend that radius and curl to the force. So if this is 45 degrees, this is 135 degrees. So 180 minus that 45. So for force number three, torque three is force three times radius three times the sine of the angle for force number three. And so we get the force of 30 times a radius of 0 0.05 times the sine and this two is a positive value because we're rotating, and that's a positive angle, and it would cause the disc to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So 30 times 0 0.05 times the sine of 135 is 1.06 Newton meters. All right. And then our final force, Force number four, that's as if it's acting on the disc if it's in the upward or vertical plane. It acts at that full 0.1 meter, so its radius is 0.1 meters, and its force is pointing to the right. So if I extend my radius and curl to the force, I have this angle and this is negative 90 degrees. It's rotating in the counter, or excuse me, clockwise direction of 90 degrees. So torque number four is force four, radius four, times the sine of angle four, which is equal to the force of 30, times the radius of 0.1, times the sine of negative 90, and I get 30 times 0.1 times the sine of negative 90, which is negative 1. We get negative 3 Newton meters. All right, so my net torque, the sum of the torques, is torque 1 plus torque 2 plus torque 3 plus torque 4. So torque 1 was a positive 1. Torque 2 was 0. Torque 3 was 1.06, and torque 4 was negative 3, and so I get about negative 1 Newton meters for my net torque. So looking at the radii and each angle for our situation, analyzing the torques for each one of our forces, and then solving for the net torque. Good job.